Guys, I'm back at my beloved Ream already. I think there's an issue with the thermostat. I'm just double checking the system. They were fiddling with the thermostat the other day and the backlight disappeared and the display disappeared. It sounds like a thermostat failure. So I'm just making sure the other parts of the system are still working. Our dryer vent is still spilling stuff onto the unit. So all ready there. Guys, in a non-scientific method, I mean, I checked the temperature on this line here with my, you know, it's not beer can cold and heat. I don't know what you would call it. You see, I don't know, but it's nice and hot. Our pressure goes down and starts to come back up again. As long as we come back up in the general neighborhood of 40 to 50 pounds, because we're around 40 degrees outside, I'll be satisfied. There was a defrost a minute ago. It was quick. Didn't take forever. If you have a low charge or something like that, defrost will take a long time because it takes a long time to build up enough heat to bring the sensor back. So I'm gonna give it a couple seconds out here, but it looks like we're good to go. And I'm gonna go inside and double check that we have heat strip operation and all that good stuff. Guys, I was watching the machine and all of a sudden it switched into cooling just in the middle of the heating cycle. Not a defrost cycle, just a like regular old cooling cycle. And at first I was gonna check, see how many volts we had coming in for the reversing valve because it's energizing the heating on this ream unit. Then I saw that this plug that's on the top of the reversing valve it was kind of tilted up and evidently it had vibrated loose because as soon as I put it back down it went into heating so that could explain some of their problems as well so we'll see looks like uh, that might have been it but it was running and heating when I got here maybe something that was making contact some of the time could have been that we're still gonna double check the heat strips and all that and then we will hopefully give it a clean bill of health thermostat might have to be changed anyway just as a precaution you guys we're down here in the crawl space connected to the basement and 43 amps means our heat strips are functional. They are working, so we have no issues there. The air handler is old as dirt. You can sort of see it. It's the same one from my everything HVAC related is dirty. TC Air Edition on Talon 875. But I just wanted to confirm the heat strips are running. More than likely their issue was either this thermostat or this loose plug on the reversing valve. Kind of strange, but you know, shit happens. Over there, you can hear, I talked to some of you fellas about changing out a sump pump. It's down there. We'll get a little bit closer to look on it, but they haven't done anything about that yet. The basement was flooded when I got here. So, hopefully whenever I tell them again, it will inspire them to make a change. But it looks like the system is still working. The dirty old bird. <laughs> still alive. Aluminum wire, baby. Rocking it like it's 1990. Down here in this basement still. You know, you know, I don't know how much of this is dirt and how much of it is mold, but this basement has held so much water for so long. There's mold on the bathroom ceiling. And to me, that looks like that's mold. Again, I'm not an expert on mold. I just know what I see in the air handlers that grows, and it looks similar to that. So, not nice. This floor down here is always uh, flooded. The pump always gets stuck. The pump needs to be replaced. The pump needs to be repiped. It's just some kind of flexible pipe running outside, kind of cheap. I told them I'd like to put a pump in, like some of you guys have seen use them where they pump up with PVC and they run outside. But this place looks kind of nasty down here. Yikes. Guys, you know that things like mold and dirt and all that stuff can get overlooked sometimes. It's either overlooked entirely in my experience or used too aggressively. Meaning a company will come in and say, oh, I see something looks like dirty, moldy duck. I need to replace the whole system. Absolutely. Or we're all gonna die, you know? It's not the case. You know, most molds are not deadly in most people. That doesn't mean they can't be deadly um, Stachybotrys is a really bad mold, you know, black mold, and that can cause respiratory issues, and then in turn those respiratory issues can cause death, especially in people that are infirm or extremely young. So you can't overlook it. Now people will use it to go on wild tangents to sell crazy shit to everybody, and that's something that needs to be reined in. But telling somebody, hey, you got some mold here, we need to address it. I want to go ahead and let you know what's going on because if if I don't let you know, to me that makes me sort of responsible for issues that occur 
because I'm the guy coming here to work. I need to relay this information because it pertains to the HVAC system. The HVAC system, you know, transmits these mold particles around. It may not be the cause of the mold, and that means that we didn't cause it directly, but we can do something about it. So we need to communicate whatever we see to the tenant or homeowner. Some of these people, though, they're extremely cheap. They don't want to pay for anything. They don't want to do anything. I've gone over and over with this whole sump pump about five times. Tell them, you know, if you need me to change out the pump, I'll change out the pump. You know, it costs a few hundred dollars to change out this pump. So, it's you know, it's not a big job, but, you know, you want to get a good pump, go ahead and pipe it out and do a good job with it. And then they wait and they wait and the basement floods and floods and it's, you know, everything's covered in this shit now and the homeowner says she's having a hard time breathing. And you also have to deal with homeowners, especially if it's a tenant, that will tend to be overly dramatic about the situation. Because tenants, you know, not to say it's this particular one, but I've seen tenants play things up in order to get things given to them or whatever, you know, it's like, I saw a piece of mold, oh, I'm going to die. Surely I can have this month's rent for free? sort of thing we have to deal with. You have to make a judgment based on your feelings, not the feelings of the tenant, not the feelings of the landlord, but you have to do what is right and tell them everything you think that should be done. Now they may not do it, but at least you've told them. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to communicate those things to the landlord once again. Um, it's somewhat of a frustration because you want people to do the right thing. People got to have the money to do the right thing, but in this situation you got to kind of stand up and take care of people. So, that one's all done until I go back to hopefully change that pump and do a few other odds and ends. You know, a UV light would be nice. Just go back and look at Tally 75. Everything HVAC related is dirty DC air edition. That's me scooping that brown shit out of the air handler. You know, the kind of stuff where you think well, after you touch it, you need to be wearing one of them white fucking suits with a mask, like from the movie Outbreak, you know. Listen there. We're going to touch something can't touch this stuff. We will die. <laughs> so, that's about it for this one, guys. Hopefully we'll see this house again soon to kind of straighten some of this stuff out. And I will see you guys on the next one.